What's going on everybody, it's Dilmer and welcome to the channel. So in today's video, I'm really excited to share with you a roadmap of what you will need to get started with XR. This means that if you want to get into augmented reality, virtual reality, as a developer, as a designer, this video is going to give you a deep understanding of everything that is required from getting a computer, from getting XR hardware, from also understanding what SDKs are recommended to also what SDKs you can use for additional use cases. So let's go ahead and take a look. So how do you get started in 2023 with XR? There's a lot of different resources, a lot of different tools, SDKs that might get you confused. So what I did, I put together a resource that it's going to help you in understanding what the ultimate development learning path is. This is something that I use personally. This is something that other people have used. So let's go ahead and dive into some of the questions. So the ultimate question is, how do you get started, right? You may be looking into that. You might look at my videos. You might be looking at other videos on YouTube, also different training material, but you're really confused on how to get going. So what XR hardware do you need to get started? That's gonna be something that I'm going to be covering today. What are some of the computer requirements that you might need for augmented reality? The same thing for VR. What are the computer requirements for virtual reality development or design? Also, what XR tools and SDKs I currently recommend, things that I'm using with my clients, things that I've been playing around for many years, and then additional XR tools and SDKs for specific use cases. Not all the use cases that I'm gonna be covering on number four, are going to basically solve all the different solutions. So you might need to look at other resources and other tools. So I'm gonna be mentioning some of the top tools that I really like and I, I have experiment with. So as far as like LearnXR.io, which is my website and resources that you can get from there, there are currently many resources you can get from that website. I am currently basically launching a pre-sale where I am doing an augmented reality and a virtual reality course. So on the virtual reality course, you can go in and dive into the virtual reality development with the XR Interaction Toolkit, which I really recommend that you enroll. For anybody getting and interested in augmented reality and learning path, I recommend looking at AR development with AR Foundation, which is what I cover and will be covering in a lot of detail as soon as that releases. And then as a prerequisite, I also am doing a C-sharp programming fundamentals with Unity, which is gonna teach you how to use C-sharp and the scripting language that Unity uses for VR and also augmented reality and also game development. So I would recommend that you look at those three and I'm doing a pre-sale right now that goes from the 5th of February all the way to February 25th. So if you guys wanna join right now, you're gonna get 50% off from those courses. So moving along on the XR hardware, if you're doing development with Apple, I recommend to look at iOS with ARKit, which is ARKit is the technology behind augmented reality that Apple developed. I also recommend to get an iOS device, the A9 chipset or greater. So Apple, ever since the A9, that's when augmented reality started working with Apple devices. So just make sure that that's going to be one of the requirements that we satisfy. I also included a listing here of iPhone devices that support ARKit. If you notice on the ARKit line, there's not an X, so Air, uh, the iPhone 6 and the iPhone 6 Plus doesn't support ARKit, but ever since the iPhone SE, iPhone 6S, and iPhone 6S Plus, ARKit has been supported, and there's also a lot of features that have been added since then to ARKit, which I'm going to be covering as well. So iPad devices are also supported with ARKit, so if you have an iPad device, and your iPad device has one of these uh, compatibility, which in this case, the iPad Pro 10.5 inch, also the 12.9 inch, and then all the way to the iPad Pro 12.9 inch, which is one of the, the greater versions and more, most recent versions, then they support ARKit. So if you have any of these ones, I recommend you to, I mean, to use it because that's gonna help you with using the tools that I'm mentioning today. And then there's also LiDAR support, and LiDAR support was also introduced in some of the latest devices. So if you have anything you know, earlier than these devices right here, iPhone 12 Pro and the Pro Max or greater, support LiDAR. Also the iPad 2020 Pro, iPad 2021 13 inch, also support LiDAR. 
And why do you need LiDAR? Well, I'm gonna be showing you why LiDAR is important, but it basically provides you with better understanding on the environment when you're doing things with augmented reality. That is really a big deal because you want things to feel more natural and that just has to do with depth and also you know, making sure that when you're doing heat tests and, and touching on something on augmented reality, we have more accurate positioning on those objects. So if we move along, here's an example of how LiDAR is helpful. So in this case, you can kind of see a grid on the buildings and it's understanding the floors, also where the pulse is. And, and that helps you because if, you, if your experience knows more about the surroundings, then when you're overlaying objects in augmented reality, 3D objects or UI objects, then in that case, things are going to be positioned you know, a lot better. And that's just one use case. There's many different use cases. So on the Android side, as far as like Android, if you want to develop experiences with Android. So in that case, augmented reality, it's embedded into AR Core. In AR Core, it's, there's a big list of different devices that support AR Core for Android. I'm gonna be putting basically a link on the description that shows you what devices support AR Core as of today, and also which devices support the Dev API, which I'm gonna show you what that is. So you can see here there's ASUS devices that are supported, different models, some of them support the Dev API, some of them don't support Dev API. If you go to the Google Pixel 6, which is one that I use and I have, and I use a lot, they support the Dev API and also a lot of different features. So the Android Dev API support is important because it can help you, just like the LiDAR did for iOS devices, it, it can also help you with, you know, heat tests. So in this case, you can kind of see that he's placing different objects on the couch and he's really precise at the locations where he's placing those objects. If we take a look at the cat here, it also helps with occlusion. So if we look at this picture right here, the cat is perfectly positioned behind the actual, I think that's a couch. And also in this case, it's not positioned correctly. This is a 3D object, so it's not really occluded correctly. So the Dev API can actually give a more level of realism to the experiences that you're creating for augmented reality. And then lastly, if we take a look at the depth map that gets generated, Anything that is closer to the camera, it's going to be red. Anything that is far away from the camera is going to be blue. So this just helps you with understanding the environment. It provides you a depth map. So that it's something that is really helpful about the Dev API. So if we move along to VR hardware, now that we know some of the devices that you can use for AR. So for VR, especially for the uh, devices that I use for the XR toolkit and other technologies that I'm currently using, I recommend getting a MetaQuest 1 or a MetaQuest 2. You can also get a MetaQuest Pro if you want to you know, do the investment. It's a little more expensive than the Quest. It's actually a lot more expensive than a Quest and, and a Quest 2. And you can also get an OpenXR device. I've been using the Pico 4 for that. And also there's an HP device that supports Windows Mixed Reality, or you can also use a HoloLens if you wanted to do that. And these are standalones and the Windows Mixed Reality, if you use an HP one or an HP Revert, those ones will require that you have a computer. And in a lot of cases, you'll need a very powerful computer. So that could be a little more costly where if you're using a MetaQuest one or a MetaQuest two, that is all standalone, unless you want to use PC Link, which I'm gonna show you what that is in just a minute, where you need to run things on the debugger. So you, you don't have to deploy every single time. So I think, that investment could be, you know, could be a good thing because it's gonna allow you to develop a lot faster. So some of the devices, like I said, the Oculus Quest 2 or MetaQuest 2, also the MetaQuest Pro is one that you can use. This one, it's the HP Windows Mixed Reality. It, this one, it will require a computer, so it could be a lot more costly if you need to get, you know, a powerful computer to run a VR experience. And also the Pico 4, which I've been using for some of my videos. So computer requirements are really hard to, to tell you uh, that you need a specific computer because the solutions that I'm gonna give you are not going to satisfy AR development and VR development. I'm gonna tell you what I use today and I can kind of give you an idea. So let's look at some of the Unity editor system requirements. So if you're using Windows, which is one that I really recommend for all things XR 
and I'll tell you that in a minute. But you can use Windows 7, Windows 10, Windows 11, uh, CPU of x64 architecture is recommended, and also graphics API, which is DirectX 10, 11, or 12. And also there's additional GPUs, which I'm gonna be covering as well. On the Mac OS side, you have to have Mojave 10.14 or greater, Big Sur 11.0 with Apple Silicon Editor, also x64 architecture, and then if you're using Linux, you can use also Ubuntu, which the versions are here, and also the x64 instruction set. So on the PC side, I really recommend using a PC because it does provide you with a wider level of support. There are many different tools today which will require a PC, specifically with meta development. You do need a PC if you want to run the actual debugger where you can also see everything that is running on the device right within Unity. You don't have to deploy every single time. If you don't have that and you're using a Mac, you have to deploy, basically do a build and then deploy, which takes a lot of time. So, and also if you're using, you know, if you are doing Android development, you can also use a PC to do that. The only problem with having a PC and not having a Mac is if you want to do deployment to iOS. So that's why I put in here for iOS deployment, Mac OS is required and you need to have Xcode 12.5 or later. So this is the only reason why I have a Mac today. I used to be a Mac user 100%, but now I've been moving away from it because of XR. Now I'm trying to get back into it. And one of the reasons is because I needed to do and work with some clients on iOS applications. So I need to do deployments by using a Mac computer. And then, like I said, no one computer fits all development needs. So you might need one or the other one. It just really depends on your situation and what you want to focus on. So on the MetaQuest link side, this is something that is a must have. So initially I got a computer, which is a razor blade and I got the base, the base model. I think it was about $1,200 at the time. And, and, and if I wanted to get a beefier computer, it was almost about 2,500 to 3,000. I didn't really want to make that expense. So I went with the cheaper option. And now I kind of regret it because I can't really use MetaQuest Link and I'll show you why. So Meta updated the requirements and now you need, so the processor, I do have an i5 processor. I think it's an i7 actually, and they require an i5. So I satisfy this. The only problem is the GPU. I do satisfy the memory, which is, I think I have 16 gigs of RAM. And then the, the minimum for this is eight gigs. Windows 10, I have Windows 10, so I satisfy that. And, the Razer Blade has many USB ports, so this is not an issue. The issue is with the GPU. I have a very basic GPU. I don't remember what it is, to be honest, but it's not one of the ones that are supported based on what Meta requires now. So if you have any of the ones that are following in here, AMD you know, 400 series, all the way to AMD 600 series, Vega series, then you should be okay with using MetaQuest Link. But if you have an NVIDIA Titan or any of the ones here, you will also get supported, but anything other than these ones, it's not going to allow you to, to use the MetaQuest link. And it actually shows you a really nasty error that says you don't have the supported, you know, requirements to run basically a PC experience, on a PC VR experience on my computer, which I thought was a gaming computer, but it, you know, it turns out that it, it doesn't. So if you want to use, if you do VR development and basically debug and do fast development iteration with Quest Link, which I recommend, make sure that you get a computer that satisfies these requirements. I would basically tend to go more of the medium high level. That way you don't run into the problem of they updating the requirements. And then now you can really debug with the Meta Quest Link. So this is really important for the VR development side of things. And then as far as like tools that you would need to get started with augmented reality or virtual reality. So let's start with AR Foundation, which is the augmented reality piece. So AR Foundation is basically a multiple platform package with a common set of APIs. So think about if you want to support iOS devices or if you want to support Android devices, or let's say that you want to also support a HoloLens device. Well, you can use Unity AR Foundation to do that without having to have a specific code for each section. You don't want to say something like, okay, if it's, if Android do this, if iOS do this, or maybe just have one game engine for one, one game engine for another one, or maybe just, you know, Xcode for one versus using Android Studio for another one. 
This allows you to use Unity with a common set of APIs that will allow you to move faster and you don't have to be targeting specific areas. There are there's some of that in there, but it's really powerful in a way that you can do a lot of a lot of things with it without having to rewrite your code. So again, this is just an example of some of the features. This is a hit test with plane detection, uh, showing you some of the visualization in there. And then some of the things and how AR Foundation works is that it works as a plugin system. So you install AR Foundation and then you have all these different plugins. You have a Google AR Core XR plugin for Android. You also have one for Apple. So you basically go through a package manager and tell it what kind of plugins you want. And if you don't want to do that, there's also a platform package that it's under the XR package manager that allows you to do a lot of this automatically. Well, you have to set it, but automatically pulls it from the Unity repositories. And then there's also an OpenXR plugin that works with the HoloLens 2. So if you move on on the platform support, some of the features that they support. So if you want to support AR Core and you want to support AR Kit or OpenXR, these are some of the things that they support out of the box. So if you want to do session or device tracking, that is supported all the way across with AR Core, AR Kit, and OpenXR. The camera, you can access the camera from AR Core and AR Kit. Looks like OpenXR doesn't support it. Plane detection is all the way across except on OpenXR, which in this case is HoloLens 2. And then image tracking is supported on AR Core, AR Kit. Image tracking is very, very popular and it's a feature that you know you can use basically a 2D image to detect and place a 3D object, basically where it detects it. You can also use object tracking, but that's only available in ARKit. Face tracking is supported on ARCore, and ARKit is not supported on OpenXR. Body tracking, as I've shown you in the channel, is supported on ARKit, but not supported on ARCore. And then point clouds all the way across except OpenXR. And then I show you meshing, right? Meshing, it's, well, I show you that on the lighter piece. That's where, you know, we started to look at a more advanced features. So ARKit has lighter on some of the mobile devices. So that's going to generate meshing. That's going to create a mesh of the real world. But unfortunately, it's not supported on AR Core by using AR Foundation. So that it's not a check mark there. Environment props is supported except, except on open XR, and then there's all the other fe other features in here that you can also look at. There's obviously other tools that I'm going to show you towards the end that support a lot more features and are really powerful, but they also cost a lot of money. So that's why I'm putting some of these free tools available for you at the beginning, and then I can show you some of the additional tools that you can use for more use cases. So. On the XR world, the XR toolkit is also specifically, it's not specifically for VR, but there's also, there's actually a lot of tools. It's also a multiple platform package with a common set of APIs, just like I mentioned with AR Foundation. I use it a lot for uh, virtual reality development, so you can also use it for AR, and but I'm not going to be covering that a lot today, but basically allows you to do both. The This is a cross-platform this provides a cross-platform XR controller input for MetaQuest, for OpenXR, Windows Mixed Reality Devices, like I mentioned. You can also use it for basic object hover, select, grab, haptics, and so on. You can also use it to interact with the user interface. There's also locomotion, there's also teleportation, there's also uh, multiple systems that allow you to basically change the state of an object basically change the color of an object, which I'm also going to be covering in my training. So just make sure that you look at that. So other XR tools and SDKs that are also available for more advanced scenarios, and I could call it more advanced scenarios, but this could be very specific use cases for AR. One that I really like and I really recommend to look at is Lightship ARDK. This was developed by Niantic, and unfortunately they didn't use AR Foundation at the time to build on top of it. They basically rewrote the entire thing from ground up and created their own set of instructions for augmented reality and APIs in Unity. So I wish they would have done it the other way so that we could leverage the power of AR Foundation. But anyways, that's what, that's how things are right now. And I do recommend it because they support real-time mapping. And this is really powerful because I mentioned that LiDAR, it's a really cool feature 
Well, they do use LiDAR on iOS, but on Android, they have their own algorithm. So if you wanted to use Meshing for Android and also for iOS, I really recommend using Lightship ARDK because it'll work on both devices. They also provide multiplayer tools, segmentation. So segmentation, if you wanted to detect if you know where, where the clouds are or where the sky is, maybe you wanted to do some human segmentation, you wanted to know and, and get a map of where the humans are on the video feed, they allow you to do that, which is really cool. And also they have a VPS system, which is visual positioning system, really, really powerful. And I could go on and on and on about that, but it's really, really powerful when it comes to detecting different areas. And basically if I wanted to scan this room and I could basically pull the VPN system and be able to detect it with a very precise accuracy of where things are. So really cool system. And I went to Lightship and I went to an event there and they actually show a lot of different powerful experiences that people were doing with that. And then Buforia, you probably heard of Buforia, they've been, uh, they've been you know, available for a long time. The, they support area targets, model targets, cylinder targets, multi-targets, and, and a lot more features that are supported. They do have a free tier and also more advanced tiers. I would recommend to look at the websites for both of them to look at and see what's available. And WebXR, it's a, it's a big deal, right? We want to support augmented reality through the web. And there's many different options today. The one that is more popular right now is the AWOL. And they have a lot of different features that they support, including the, including the ones that I, that I showed to you on AR Foundation. And also one that has been you know, going around and getting a lot of popularity is Needle Tools. I also recommend that you look into that. And then for VR and ones that I really like to use is Meta Interaction SDK. They have very realistic, a system that allows you to use a very realistic hand interactions and also controller interactions. So if you wanted to grab something with, you know, that looks really, you know, that looks realistic in a way that if your fingers adapt to the shape of the object that you're grabbing, you can use them. They also have different interactions for if you wanted to interact with UI, if you wanted to do gesture recognition on your hands, then, you know, anything to do with hand tracking and, and realistic interactions, I would look into Meta Interaction SDK. And then VRTK is also another one that is really popular, Virtual Reality Toolkit. They provide body physics within virtual spaces, UI and 3D interactions, and a lot more teleportation, loco locomotion is all supported in there. And then one that is really popular as well is MRTK, Microsoft Mixed Reality Toolkit. It supports the Quest, the Quest 2 devices, also HoloLens, HoloLens 2, and also a lot of different devices in the Mixed Reality you know, platform. So I really recommend to look at those. And then also for WebXR, like I mentioned before, the AWOL also has a VR component that you can use. And it all tools also has a VR component that you can use. I haven't really touched them yet, but they do support those. So I would recommend to look at those. So that's everything that I wanted to show you guys today. If you guys have any questions about starting with extended reality development, either as a developer or as a designer with augmented reality on virtual reality, let me know in the comments. And if you're curious about starting the XR course and you have additional questions, let me know as well. Thank you very much, guys.